so oh it's nice to be able to do that isn't it i am in st nick's church here in Anna street and normally on christmas eve everybody will be coming in here we'd have hundreds of people all excited all thinking about what's going to be happening a bit later on tonight we're really sorry we can't get you safely in the building for this christmas it's looking a bit different but you know what we've still got our christmas tree and some of you I know have been in to add a golden heart in memory of a loved one. And some of you will also recognise the Advent wreath. And we've lit now all the candles, which represent every Sunday leading up to Christmas Day. And tomorrow, this big white candle will be lit. Now, it's great that you're all here. Um, I know you've had some instructions already about what we're going to be doing and why we're going to be doing it. And what we're going to be then doing is uh, joining in. You can sing as loud as you want at home. Some of you may be wearing some costumes. If you haven't got anything, you can go get a tea towel, put it around your head, and you could be a shepherd. Or perhaps you've dressed as an angel or Joseph, or maybe you've got a crown that you could just put on your head and you can pretend to be a wise man. So if you want to do that, very quickly, go and get something and that's fine and come back again. We are going to be singing. As I said, you can be as loud as you want. You might even have some musical instruments to join in with. <gasps> Don't tell your mummies and daddies that I told, said that to you. And if you're ready and we're all ready to go, that's brilliant. So we're meeting in the light and love of Christ and we're going to sing together our first song. Oh Camel, no, only joking. Not O Camel, all ye faithful. O Camel, all ye faithful. Let's sing.
happens every year. I always get a birthday card or two at this time of year. But you know, boys and girls, it's not my birthday. But I always receive the cards. You see, I'm not the point of this celebration. No. Let me tell you. I've got my book just here. He's here. Everything was ready. The moment God had been waiting for was here at last. God was coming to help his people just as he'd promised in the beginning. But how would he come? What would he be like? What would he do? Mountains would have bowed down and seas would have roared. Trees would have clapped their hands. But the earth held its breath as silent as snow falling he came in and when no one was looking in the darkness he came. There was a young girl who was engaged to a man named Joseph or Joe to his friends. Joseph was the great 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 grandson of King David. One morning this girl was minding her own business when suddenly a great warrior of light appeared right there in her bedroom. He was Gabriel and he was an angel, a special messenger from heaven. When he saw the tall shining man standing there, Mary was frightened. You don't need to be scared, Gabriel said. God is very happy with you. Mary looked around to see if perhaps he was talking to somebody else. Mary, Gabriel said, and he laughed with such gladness when Mary's eyes filled with sudden tears. Mary, you're going to have a baby, a little boy, and you will call him Jesus. He is God's own son. He's the one. He's the rescuer. The God who flung planets into space and kept them whirling around and around. The God who made the universe with just a word. The one who could do anything at all was making himself small and coming down as a baby. Wait! God was sending a baby to rescue the world? But it's too wonderful, Mary said and felt her heart beating hard. How can it be true? Is is anything too wonderful for God? Gabriel asked. So Mary trusted God more than what her eyes could see. And she believed. I am God's servant, she said. Whatever God says, I will do. Sure enough, it was just as the angel had said. Nine months later, Mary was almost ready to have her baby. Now, Mary and Joseph had to take a trip to Bethlehem, the town King David was from. But when they reached the little town, they found every room was full. Every bed was taken. Go away, the innkeepers told them. There isn't any place for you. Where would they stay? Soon, Mary's baby would come. They wouldn't find anywhere except an old, tumble-down stable. So they stayed where the cows and the donkeys had, and the horses had stayed. And there, in the stable, amongst the chickens and the donkeys and the cows, in the quiet of night, God gave the world his wonderful gift. The baby that would change the world was born. His baby son. Mary and Joseph wrapped him up to keep him warm. They made a soft bed of straw and used the animal's feeding trough as his cradle. And they gazed in wonder at God's great gift, wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Mary and Joseph named Jesus Emmanuel, which meant God has come to live with us. 
because of course he had. Now I'm going to leave it there and we might pick it up later. I think, I think it's time for a song. What, what shall we go for? Um, how about Away in a Manger? I, I know lots of good children on my good list who know that one very well. And adults, I'm still watching you remember. Off you go. Well, you want to know what happened that night? Well, I'll tell you, but just before we start, there's two things about us shepherds you probably need to know. The first thing is that we're not very important in the great scheme of things. People don't think being a shepherd is a very good job and the posh people tend to look down upon us. But even despite that, it was a great night. The other thing I need to tell you is that we don't scare easy. No chance. I mean, shepherds, we're out in the hills protecting the sheep. We have to see off wolves and even occasionally we need to chase off a lion. Yep, that's definitely, you need to know that we don't scare easily. But that night, we were scared, I can tell you. There we were, a night just like any other. A pretty cold night. We were gathered round the fire, chatting, doing nothing much. No wolves, no lions. And then, all of a sudden there was this amazingly bright light there right in front of us and there was an angel a messenger of God stood there shining with a great big sword on his belt and a shield Wow scared yes we were scared cowering backwards trying to keep away we didn't know what was going on don't be afraid says the angel don't be afraid. Ooh, with an angel standing there, didn't really help. But he went on talking quite quietly. I've got good news for you. I bring you good news that will make you really joyful. For tonight, down in Bethlehem, in David's town, a saviour has been born. The Christ, the one you've all been waiting for, has been born here tonight. And then all of a sudden, the sky was full of angels praising God and saying glory to God in the highest 
and peace to those on earth that he's well pleased with. Wow, that was amazing. Well, we were still sat around the fire. Shall we go? Shall we not go? What was it that angel said? You'll find him lying in a manger in a cattle feeding trough. Dare we go? What about the sheep? Well, we had a bit of a discussion and we decided that even though we weren't very important people, that God had chosen to tell us first. So we really had to go, didn't we? We thought about the sheep and all that, but then if, if God was telling us something so special, then surely God could look after the sheep as well. So off we went down to Bethlehem. And there we found in a stable, a baby lying in an animal feeding trough with his mum Mary and Joseph was there and we told them what we'd seen and you know when we looked on that baby when I looked at that baby something amazing happened I realized it was the most important moment of my life well when we left we couldn't help talking about it we told everybody we met we walked one or two up I'm sure making a lot of noise and fuss but we just could not contain our excitement and do you know since I met Jesus that night my life has never been the same it was the most important thing that has ever happened to me about them well I know I do and tonight is what is it it's Christmas Eve which means tomorrow is Christmas Day Jesus's birthday what an amazing birth story we've got angels shepherds and more angels and scurvy Herod and wise men and gifts because that's what we do isn't it when it's a birthday or a baby's been born we bring gifts it's funny though, isn't it? It's Jesus' birthday we're celebrating, but we're the ones that get gifts. I love it. I love a gift. And, oh, cool. Jesus, the greatest gift. Hmm. Have you ever heard that saying before? Jesus, the greatest gift. It's a funny saying, isn't it? How can a human baby be a present? let alone the greatest gift to everyone. When I was about five or six, these were my main Christmas presents, three Care Bears. And I remember being so overwhelmed with happiness and joy. I loved them so much that I carried them everywhere with me. I remember taking them to church, even though I was quite little, it's quite an armful when you're small. But that feeling, and even now, I won't tell you how many years ago that was, but it was a while. When I look at them, I remember that feeling of just loving them so much, which is why I still have them. And so when we're talking about Jesus being the greatest gift, part of that is about how gifts make us feel. That sense of feeling full and happy and joyous. We're gonna come on to that a little bit more later. Jesus is God's son. 
He is part of God, God in human form, in a human packaging. And he came to give you and me some amazing, precious and valuable gifts. And we've got a clue to what some of those gifts are that we're going to be looking at, thinking about today. And I've got my Bible with me to help me understand what those gifts are about. Shall we take a look at our first one? What do you think that one's about? Love. I think you're right. I think it is about love. Jesus came to give us love, unblending, unfathomable, immeasurable, unstoppable love for you and me. Wow. Jesus came to not only tell us about love, but to show us love. And he did that by being born in a small stable in the middle of a little town called Bethlehem in a faraway country called Israel over 2,000 years ago. And not only was he born, but he grew up and he died and then was raised again to life. And he did all of that because of this. So that we could have a relationship with God without having to earn it, without having to do certain things other than just to say, yes, Jesus, I want to have a relationship with you. I want to know you in my life. We're going to read a bit from the Bible now to help us understand Jesus' gift of love a bit more. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. I wonder what is another gift that Jesus has given to us. things like being selfish, not thinking of others, being mean. The angels said to the shepherds, For today in the town of David, a saviour has been born. What's a saviour? Somebody who rescues us, isn't it? But why do we need rescuing? Because of this. This stuff gets in the way of our relationship with God. We call it sin, which is a funny word. It means when we're doing stuff, that isn't the way God intended us to live our lives. And it becomes like blocks between us and God. But do you know something? When Jesus died on the cross, he was like a border razor. He did this to all our sin. He got rid of it all. So now there are no blocks between us and God having a relationship with him. And whenever we say sorry, Jesus always forgives us. And the BSL, the British Sign Language sign for forgiveness is this. And I like it because it's almost like a rubbing away the sin, just like the board rubber rubbed away those words, forgiveness. So far we've looked at love and forgiveness. I wonder what the next one's going to be. Bubbles! Yeah! Bubbles! Woohoo! Bubbles? Jesus gives us bubbles? Must be representing something, mustn't it? Joy! Bubbles do make me feel quite joyous. What about you? I'm sure they do. Who doesn't love bubbles? I think we're going to have to use our Bible again to help us understand joy being a gift from Jesus. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Joy is our strength. Joy, bubbles, Jesus giving us joy. Ah, when the Holy Spirit helps us to know what God is like and who he is, 
we know how loved and forgiven we are at the two gifts we looked at before and that makes joy bubble up inside us no matter what our circumstances isn't that amazing and crazy and our bsl sign for joy is this joy 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 so what have we looked at so far love forgiveness joy i wonder what's next of a bird. Not just any bird. What bird do you think it is? It's a dove. Hmm, I wonder what this is trying to tell us about what Jesus gives us. Oh, peace. Jesus gives us peace. In the Bible, a dove is often written about when we're reading about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit and peace we're going to have to look at our Bible again. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And in the song that the angels sang to the shepherds, they sang about peace. They said, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among all people who bring pleasure to God. And the BSL sign for peace. Peace, love, forgiveness, joy, peace. Hmm, wonder if there's anything else for us to find in the box. I just saw a hand doing that. Fingers crossed. What does that mean? Hope. And that's actually the sign for hope. Hope. Isn't that interesting? Crossing your fingers. It's something we do, isn't it? When we really, really long for something or wish for something or hope for something. Hope. Do you know, I learned recently where this comes from. Early Christians used to do this when they were worried about something, to remind them of Jesus dying on the cross, the power of God was bigger than anything, and that they could put their trust and hope in him. So the next time you do that, it's actually about Jesus. But hope's a funny word, isn't it? The dictionary defines it as, hope is an optimistic state of mind with the expectation of positive outcomes. And um, that's was a bit hard to understand. Maybe I can find something else in the box to help us. Oh, there's a plan. Hmm, a plan and hope. I think we're going to have to turn to the Bible again to help us. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. There's that word hope again. Plan, hope. So Jesus gives us hope. He has a plan. God has a plan. Even though we may not know it or fully understand it, it brings such comfort to know that there is a bigger, stronger, all-loving power that has all of this in perspective and has a plan to bring out something good in the end, especially when we've had such a horrible year with the pandemic. For Christians to believe and trust in God, to have a hope that he knows what is going on and he will bring good out of the most horrible situations. That's an amazing gift. So we do the recap together again. Love, forgiveness, joy, peace, hope. I wonder if there's anything else in there. And these gifts that we're 
thinking about today are just some of the gifts because Jesus' gifts are never ending, never failing. He never runs out of love, forgiveness, joy, peace and hope. I hope I can get out of here. Jesus really is the greatest gift. But if you're watching this Christmas Eve and you're thinking, Anna, I really want those gifts. I want Jesus's love and forgiveness and joy and peace and hope for me today. Then you can. Or maybe you have those gifts, but you feel you've forgotten about them and you want Jesus to give you a fresh dose of them. Then I'm gonna ask you to join me in a prayer. We're going to do a Christmas prayer drill. One, two, three. Father, we thank you for this time of year we stop to remember the amazing story of Jesus' birth. God incarnate in human form, Emmanuel, God with us. Holy Spirit, would you come to us now and give us those gifts of love, of forgiveness, of joy, of peace, and of hope. Four. Amen. We're going to have another time of prayer now in this short video. A Christmas prayer. Father, as we celebrate again, the keeping of your promise, the coming of the Messiah, the birth of your Son. We ask for strength, to have the faith of Mary, who was blessed for believing. That she would bear your son. We ask for joy. To be astonished as the shepherds. the message of the angels that Emmanuel has come. We ask for humble hearts to be selfless as the wise men bearing gifts across the miles. to bow low before our King. We ask for courage to follow our Saviour's path from life to death to life again and to find our home with you.
We bless you now in the name of the Lord. Peace to you. We bless you now in the name of the Prince of Peace. Peace to you. Peace to you. We bless you now in the name of the Lord. Peace to you. We bless you now in the name of the Prince of Peace. Peace to you. We bless you now in the name of the Lord. Peace to you. We bless you now in the name of the Prince of Peace. Peace to you. Peace to you. We bless you now in the name of the Lord. filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the Magi, and the peace of the Christ child. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.